Daredevil. Scrotal Recall is really funny. Scrotal Recall, is right. Yes. yes. I, it's That's on my queue. I haven't started that yeah. one Yeah. Oh, queue it up. Um, I love binge watching. Yeah, I mean, I binge and not just, I mean, look at the size of me, man. I'm a binger. I did not leave the house until I passed. Hours and hours every day, and I loved it. I am a binge watcher. Four Midwest Guys presents Binge Watch. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Four Midwest Guys Presents Binge Watch. Tonight we'll be reviewing Iron Fist Season 1. Here to help me do that is Mr. Brian Inkabout. Hey, what's up, what's up? What's going on, B? And in my brother, Aaron. Hey, man, how's it going? How's it going, dude? All right, guys, so we're finally here. The Last Defender has finally shown up. Uh, it is Iron Fist Season 1. Uh, we are on the verge of Defenders coming out, and we forgot that we hadn't reviewed this one yet. So, uh, oh yeah, Defenders comes out when next week? Ooh. Yeah, next Friday actually. Wow, yeah. we're getting this one in precisely. <laughs> so, for those of you who haven't watched yet, <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to binge right before the you know beginning of the Defenders actual this show, is like, this is the podcast for you. Well, you know, there's, there's, I've, I've been, I read on some of the Facebook sites that there are people that wa- rewatch them all in a row by the next. Next Defender one came out. Yeah. So they watch Daredevil 1, Daredevil 2, you know, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, yeah. and, uh, Iron Fist. They'll watch them all up to the Defenders and watch it all as one. I'm like, that's a lot of hours of binge watching. Dude, oh, yeah. that would be like five days straight almost. Pretty close to it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going to block out this entire week. The, um, people do it, though. Yeah. I think if you're going to do that, like, you need like a treadmill or something like well, you that, need to be like moving in well, between like, that, like uh, you need to alternate do you see that that's like that commercial on tv and like that, that couple they talk about binge watching and they he goes uh he's like oh grandpa had his birthday and grandpa died and like, <laughs> are those cobwebs in the ceiling and she's like you have something in your beard he's like oh a cheeto <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was just one of the things like you don't want you don't want blood clots. Like, oh yeah, eight, oh, yeah, that's a Captain Obvious eight, eight, commercial. Yeah, yeah, eighteen hours straight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's talk about Iron Fist. Uh, re- just a real brief intro. It is the fifth Netflix uh, comic book series. So before this, we had uh, Mar- Marvel or Daredevil, Marvel Daredevil season one and two, followed by Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and now we are into Iron. Fist, finally. Like I said, he is the last, this is the last series before the Defender uh, mm. comes out, so uh, which will put He's all of these guys together. There's four series. Defenders, right? Yeah. Hmm? Okay. Yeah, there's four Defenders, Did you say five? but this is the fifth Netflix series because there was two seasons of Daredevil. Well, it'd be yeah. seasons, no more so than, like, series. Yeah, Daredevil. okay, well, the fourth Fifth, fourth Defender, fifth, fifth season. Netflix season. Gotcha. Or your series. I, I thought you said five, and I was like, Sorry. Yes, I mean, a, that's correct. It would technically be the fourth, like, wait, fourth I said, series. Crap, but I missed another one. <laughs> they bring Hawkeye into this? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Did he get downgraded? So, yeah, uh, to clarify, that is the fifth season of a Netflix comic, Marvel comic book, but fourth series. So, yeah. fourth series, fifth season. Yeah. So. Gotcha. So, there you go. Because, like I said, we I think the, what was it? It was Daredevil season one, then uh, Jessica, Jessica Jones. Jones and Daredevil season two. Luke Cage, and now we're yep. into Iron Fist. Now we're Iron Fist, and then we get Defenders, and then we'll have Jessica Jones Season 2. Yep. Luke Cage Season 2. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Daredevil Season 3? Yeah, they uh, are going... Talks we more. actually might have Punisher out before then. Oh, oh yeah, Punisher's, Punisher's coming out, yeah. I'm literally looking forward to that. that that's going to be something. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so... Uh, it get, uh, so it's 13 episodes long, just like the rest of them have been. Uh, deals much more in the world of Mystics. Um, than a the rest bit. of the series do, even more so than Daredevil, yeah. I would say. Um, although there is a whole side thing with the Meachams, which is a good part of the Yeah, the thing you could too. almost make the argument it ends up being kind of the main storyline, even though the hand is very prominent. Very prominent, yes. Yeah, well, it's, it's almost as if um, 
the hand it like the like the the the, the defenders is the hand, mm-hmm. right? And each one of the seasons so far has been a finger. Oh, Be- because uh, each one of them has uh, their own main storyline, mm. and mm. each of them are touching on the hand, and then defenders mm. will be defenders versus the hand. Mm. So it's almost like uh, it's a hand. Uh, yeah, uh, I see where you're going. Okay, with very good. I'm not very Especially deep. with the five seasons. Yeah. Very deep, Brian. Very deep. I like it. Um, <laughs> so let's talk about the main character, obviously. We'll talk about Danny Rand, who is the Iron Fist. Uh, he's been gone 15 years. Uh, he disappeared in a plane crash over the Himalayas as mm. a kid with his parents. Um, has a hard time proving that he's Danny Rand, especially to his father's uh, well, former business partner. Especially slash in the friends. beginning, anyway. Right. So, um, I don't know. What did you guys think of the whole beginning part with that, with him? Like, they spent, like, almost four episodes <laughs> with him just trying to get... Them the, to believe, the him, to believe yeah. him that he's Dan It's Durant. interesting because you almost don't know if you believe him yourself in the beginning because he seems a little out there at times. Like, especially during the bit when you actually see him, like, taking um, the one Meacham's car and, like, driving it forward and, mm-hmm. like, what happened, what happened. You don't know if he, like, actually has, like, some form of amnesia or... Like, it definitely does eventually show it to be a variant of, like, PTSD sort of thing, but it's... Showed in such a weird well, kind of way. The, the way they presented, I think, in the first four episodes, at least my take is, is they're like they're trying. You're trying to figure out if this guy is crazy or not. Almost. Yes, because he just kind of show, the, he's really good at martial arts, but he doesn't show off his powers until I think episode four when he's locked away in the the mental the, the, asylum. The mental asylum. Yeah. And bust the door open with the, the power. Yeah, of you the, don't see it before that. Yeah, the power of the Iron Fist. Um, I don't know. What do you think, Brian? I mean, yeah, I mean, I. I it seemed like they spent a lot of time mm-hmm. with that, but I didn't mind it at first. Yeah, yeah. it really wasn't like, bad. First episode, fine. Second episode, fine. Third episode, you're like, really? Fourth episode, you're like, come on. And then then you see the Iron Fist, you're like, okay, it was worth it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, it's also interesting because, like, he's also kind of an asshole at times. And it's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a true. weird kind of character line to kind of go with him. Because, like, you see him being, like, hanging out with the one homeless dude who's like, oh, they think I'm like you. Mm-hmm. Like, that's... Kind of a dick move to yeah. do that's just being nice to a guy. Dick on. <laughs> dick, dick on? <laughs> dick on. That's your name? <clears throat> um, <coughs> sorry, we just got done doing uh, Game of Thrones podcast, in case you can't tell. Um, so, uh, just, he's, the Iron Fist is, uh, we actually, we find out that uh, the Iron Fist is actually the mortal enemy in the hand. So yeah. it turns out that the whole reason that he's, Gets his power as he's supposed to guard the city of was it Kung Lung? Kung Lao Kung Lung or Kung Lao I can't remember Kung Lung Kung Lung Kung Lung man that's bad I'm really bad with names I really got to do better with my notes <laughs> the city in the clouds city in the clouds anyway so that's why he's supposed to do but for whatever reason he leaves and they never really talk about that either they never really say why he leaves he just kind of I mean it kind of does even the character. When Davos comes in later and asks him why he leaves, like I can't really explain it, and so even well, the character I mean, hasn't flushed it out fully. I don't think. I well, don't think. I mean, yeah, there's also a little bit of that, but there is definitely like he wanted to kind of go home, and he mm-hmm. saw his only opportunity for X amount of years and that okay. sort of thing. Yeah, it, it does go into it a little bit. Yeah, it's also interesting with this where Danny he has very much has when it comes to the modern world, it's he has still has the mind of a ten year old. Yeah, like. that's something I actually find kind of weird about this because they really show him as being really naive when it comes to dealing with the world. But then when you actually have like his friend from like the one city come in, you have these stories of them going off and getting drunk and doing all kind of the basic growing up in college sort of experience you would have expected someone of him. So you would expect him to actually be more mature than how he acts through most of the show well, by the time you actually include the backstory. I mean, he has these moments where he keeps going... He- he goes on about how I am the um, I, I'm the Iron Fist. I went through all this training, and he has all this deep, you know, Far East wisdom mm. to him. But yet, when it comes, like I said, when it comes to the real world, he just automatically trusts the Meachams right off the bat, which is a mistake. Yeah, starts, well, not only that, but like he doesn't seem particularly good at handling relationships, no. or in any way, in any way. Or, like, doesn't seem particularly good at communicating, like, his... Or, or like, judging character. Yeah. Or, right. Like, anything that, like, really isn't even really dependent on, like, technology. Like, he just... I mean, to, to, to defense, he, that city or whatever, that was basically, like, a 
martial arts academy, right? Or like it's like it's mystical too. It's yeah. you know, especially but like, like so like a, that's basically all he's ever. But you're right; it did go back and show. Yeah, like them going out when the when the cities connected or aligned or whatever, mm-hmm. and yeah, the seven it, seven yeah. heavens or something. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but like it actually gives him backstory. Like he wasn't just like purely training and just like having no contact right. with other humans, right? Like he actually did have like social relationships and stuff. So like you would assume like he would have like some social skills, and he doesn't really. Yeah. Um. Like, you even see, like, there's an episode where it actually includes, like, his master, like, Roaring Thunder or whatever, like, talking in the back of his head, which is the best fucking episode in the entire series. Yeah, season. I, I didn't, I didn't yeah, like I, that. I don't understand why they stopped that either. I oh, really, I know. I really like that. I would rather have him torture him through the whole series. Oh, I know. Like, if that. you actually just made, like, like the mat, his master... Come through mas- the legend continues kind of shit, you know? I know, but, like, that was the best episode. Like, and you just have, like, his master's voice being, like, the nagging conscious in the back of his head. Mm-hmm. And it, the, the dynamic works so fucking well. Yeah, and it was just for that one episode for the test. Yeah, yeah. and it's like, amazing oh. they didn't include that because it was so phenomenal. And yeah. it it really makes his character so much better when you have, like, that, that sort balancing. of... Yeah, yeah like, yeah. you actually show, like, an internal struggle. Mm-hmm. And, like, you actually made it, like, visible to the viewer rather than just being, like... What the fuck's wrong with that dude? It would it would help with his with his insanity thing too because he'd be talking to mid to air. Yeah, <laughs> Which would be hilarious. hilarious. Everybody else. Um, the other thing, um, he, the ten year old thing. Even though all this shit keeps happening to him, he, he also is like he's stuck there. And I don't know if that's because of the P, PTSD that he goes through. Like he's emotionally stuck there. Yeah, like he can't get past it because he can't get past. Well, yeah, that, it's he definitely something he's still trying to process through, and especially as. The series goes on, you realize that it wasn't just an accident, that it was intentional, and yeah, you definitely have aspects of that he's still trying to process and deal with, even, you know, so many years afterwards. Yeah, and, and I think that leads into, you know, it's like, we see, they show that 19 World War Two footage, or Korean War footage. Of, it's around World War Two. It's like, I think this is like the early 1950s, it's bl- that black and white footage, or World War Two footage. Where they show the other Iron Fist. Yeah. And he is just fucking badass. And yeah, just Taking out a whole army everyone. by himself. Mm-hmm. So I just wonder if, because of all of his issues, if his problem, Danny's not nearly that fierce yet. Well, that and he also left, like, the one city before his training was completed. So that's also a definite part of it. Right. Like, when you actually have him learning techniques from the hand because he didn't just learn enough even in his time. Oh, yeah. Well, even Madame Gao, who who's kind of the head of the hand at the first part of the series, yeah, she during that whole test, she even says, uh, "The last Iron Fist I saw, killed without question, mm. was fierce without question." Danny questions it. He, yeah, he holds back for the good of another person, where the other Iron Fist was just was, a weapon. Was it the weapon? Which is, you know, even how Danny views himself to a certain extent at times, mm-hmm. because that's how he's been indoctrinated to view himself. Yeah. I don't know. It just seems like the only time he can use the Iron Fist is when he is in balance with his chi or whatever, because that's where his power comes from. Mm-hmm. And yet, he's the most imbalanced character there is. So maybe that's what they were going for this whole time with the series. That just makes uh, me wonder. Possibly. Like, don't be wrong. It also suggests he has to kind of like recharge it. Yeah. Which is it, an it, that, that's very much the case here. He's not in full control of it. Yeah. At, at all times. So. Um. Let's move on to the Meachams. Um, there's basically three of them. Uh, they are the close family business partners of Danny Rand's parents and friends. They helped create and build the Rand Industries with mm. the, with Danny's parents. Uh, there's Joy Meacham, uh, obviously childhood friend of Danny. Mm. I think she's pretty much until the end is more sympathetic to Danny. Oh yeah, pretty much up until the very end, like after she finds out her father was still alive and. Mm-hmm. All the things that go down with that is actually the most sympathetic to him. And Ward is actually viewed as, like, just a giant asshole from the beginning. Ward is just <laughs> fucked up. I yeah. mean, straight up fucked up. <laughs> he has probably the best scene ever. And, you know, when he's just sitting in his office. <laughs> oh, with the cameras. Watching. He's like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Are you watching? Are you watching? <laughs> Look. That's, ah. that's my favorite scene of the whole thing. Well, the thing about Joy, though, is is right off the go, she's questioning whether that's really Danny. Mm. Where War's just like, no, that's not him. You're crazy. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is, like, you she's know? sympathetic towards Danny, but, like, as soon as you actually see how she lived her life, mm-hmm. she is as vicious as, oh, yeah. 
you know that whole scene with the business thing where they they make a deal medically to save the kid's life in order to get the business deal done yeah she's cold stone cold when she needs to be stone oh, cold. oh yeah you know and so. it is a way somewhat more even than even ward ward is, is she's more yeah, yeah ward, ward is just an asshole it's weird because joy she's starts manipulative. Mm. yeah ward, joy starts off manipulative. as the 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 kinder one the mm. soft-hearted one and by the end of the episode she hates Danny, wants to kill him, and it's become hardened. Hmm. Where Ward starts off as the hard ass, and by the end of the episode, he's got more of a heart to him. Yeah. Because you see all the bullshit he's dealing with with Harold. Yeah. You know, his dad and all that, which we'll yeah. get to here in a minute. But. Which really, like, it's his relationship with Harold that is probably does make him that much of an asshole. And even from, like, a young age when you see, like, the actual, like, scenes of them as a kid sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, and Ward's, because of Harold, you know, he has, he goes through a thing with drugs. Yeah. He ends up getting fucked up with the drugs that the hand's pushing. Um, Pretty much any drug he gets his hand on, because he's just and, super, just comes across as, like, the most stressed out fucking guy in the show. He's, he's incredibly stressed out, and he... Just has, like, no, like, authority of his own life. He's just like that... He's like the high stakes businessman that goes out of control, you know. On well, a, not just that, know. but like he's being manipulated into doing it, even when he doesn't really want to. Like he well, has sure. no control over his own life. Well, yeah, he has no control over his own life, and he has to keep the secret that his father is still alive from Joy, who's his closest, you know. Pretty much his only, only human contact. His only human contact and friend that we see yep. in the series. Um, so let's talk about the monster. Let's talk about Harold Meacham. Um, who kind of starts out just. Kind of being the hand puppet, he's kind of early on. He's painted as the victim early on. Um, obviously, we've already talked about he's immortal. Uh, basically, he had cancer. The hand offered to bring him back to life, mm. and they did after he died from cancer, and which we've seen before in Daredevil. With yeah, the uh, the one Chinese guy. Yeah, um, but anyway, uh, and then probably we'll see again in Defenders with Electra. Um, no, I'm pretty sure uh, Stick killed him. Because he cut well, off his head. Right. Stick finally kills him. Yeah. Actually, because he's the... In Daredevil Season 1, he's the ninja. That, yeah, because he's the head of the Yakuza right. uh, under Kingpin. And then he comes back, and that's when Stick cuts off his head, which is the only way to kill these mortal guys, mm. by the way, we find out. Um, but yeah, he's kind of... I think you you were on to something, Aaron, before the show. We said he's kind of like an American psycho Well, I think almost. that's kind of what they wanted to go with it. Um, but I don't really think they take it far enough to really be... Like, American Psycho. Like, really, you kind of have him having this... Every time he comes back, he loses a part of his soul or his... Like, he goes somewhat brain damage or something. And that's, like, the motivations for, you know, why he gets as messed up as he does and his anger gets out of control and all that sort of stuff. But, like, you don't really see how... You don't have those, like, kind of high-intensity moments like you had with Kingpin where, like, he just smashed the dude's car in. Or, like, dude's head in with the car. He, don't know, he does kill, like, his one assistant. He kills his assistant, I was going to say. Oh, he has his yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, like, it really just doesn't have the same sort of feel and dynamic to it, I don't think. Yeah. Like, I think they, this character might have worked better had they gone a little farther with him. Okay, Brian, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I actually enjoyed this character. Mm-hmm. And the whole, the whole like, gets a little bit crazier every time he dies. And mm-hmm. he's still trying to come out from the hand. And he's yeah, I to... actually find it super fun to watch him just wandering around New York when he actually was just in that kind of, like... Come up, like, yeah, like... like a, a, not quite yeah. brain dead, but, yeah. like, just... Well, it's zombie mud. Lower functioning. or just, like, trying to figure out what's happening. <laughs> I like how he's, like, coughing up mud and shit out of his lungs. Yeah. He's like in zombie mode almost. Yeah, like, pretty yeah, much. When he first comes back. Like it's transitioning back to being human. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Pretty much walking dead, literally. Um, I don't know. Uh, he's very controlling over Ward. We kind of talked about that to a breaking point where Ward, that's where Ward kills him. Yeah. And then he comes back again. Well, I mean, essentially he's just like keeping eyes on everyone he can. Like he has cameras <laughs> Everywhere. Yeah. That's that's his because that's his link into the real world. Yeah, right. he has to stay isolated because of the hands. And, right, and the ward is kind of his, you know, his his human counterpart. You know, mm. he uses to run the company. In his yeah, it's, it's, like it's, me and John Malkovich. Yeah, kind of. He's his puppet. He's his little puppet. Yeah, very much the puppet master of Ward. Yeah. Um, ultimately, though, he is the last bad guy standing. I guess in a way. Yeah. After we deal with the, uh, it's like, it's well, like there's also, two. 
two season finales in this thing. There's like there's there's the one with the hand, hand and then there's the one with Meacham. It was Meacham for the last episode. Yeah, but you also learn that it is Harold's idea to, you know, kill the Rands, you know, Danny Rand's right. parents. So it it kind of makes sense that he'd actually be the final boss and that you have that more of the personal stakes development with it. I guess I just thought maybe stop at episode twelve and use Harold for next season. I don't know. What do you guys think? I yeah, mean, it would have been it would have been interesting to do it that way. However, we're not sure what, how the defenders is going to spin this, and so obviously Iron Fist season two mm-hmm. is going to be post defenders. defenders. So you know who knows how it's going to. Yeah, I actually yeah, think flying. it's it's not a bad idea to kind of wrap it up a little bit before you actually move on to dealing with the main hand threatened defenders. Especially because you actually already, even with the ending they have, you have Joy being set up to be a continued villain later on anyway. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's move on to, uh, I guess, uh, Iron Fist's, um, I guess, sidekick. Colleen, slash love interest. Slash love interest. Uh, Colleen Wing. I really, I actually ended up liking her more than I liked Iron Fist. Yeah, I, I did too. Yeah. I am in the same boat. Yeah. Um, she kind of starts out as a, we see her first as just like a teacher of a small dojo. Mm-hmm. Um, but she seems to be training her students for bigger things. There's like that whole ambush scene in the yeah, park. Yeah, like whatever. it's like almost trying to train them from like real world scenario sort of thing. Yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah. It's like um, but then you them. actually see her like transition to like cage fighting. And like those are some of the best fight scenes in the season. <laughs> those are are absolutely yeah. Uh, yeah, the whole like they're series. really amazing. What, was she, was she the daughter of the dragon or something? Yeah, yeah, or something like that. Well, yeah. I think in the comics it's um, Colleen Wing and. Oh, what is her name from uh, Luke Cage? The uh, the one cop. Oh, I need to talk about it. Uh, become Daughters of the Dragon. Like, that was their little spinoff sort of thing. Oh, they got a spinoff series called yeah. Daughters of the Dragon? Yeah, it was Colleen Wing cool. and Misty Knight. That's it. Uh, I mean, and then you, pretty much because then you have Power Man and Luke Cage being heroes for hire. Yeah. It was just that kind of comparison thing. But her character was really good. And maybe it's because she has more, I don't know, a more believable or like her backstory is written better well not only because like, she have an interesting backstory but she actually has more character development than danny does. yeah because she whereas has... danny's pretty static through the whole thing you actually see her questioning the things she believes in yeah goes through an entire growth thing and it's like actually changes and evolves as a character well yeah because she has she's been hoodwinked by her master uh bakudo yeah who was it and like yeah how he's creating this whole yeah, like what she, she thought was a great program yeah, for her like, students. And like she that. thought like there was different factions to the hand and she was in a good one and yeah. like she was trying to like buy for control and actually make the world a better place and like legit had the best intentions with it. And up till they get to the even when they're doing like their little, you know, training session, I'm thinking the guy's a good guy. I don't know. Were you guys? What did you guys think when you were watching that? Oh uh, yeah, I actually think it was a good plot be, twist. Yeah, it seemed to be the beginning that he was going to be a good guy. Yeah, and then you're like, okay. Yeah, and even because I knew something was because I thought, well, well, maybe he really is a good guy because Madame Gao was pissed off to see him. Yeah, and he taught Danny how to cure her from the poison mm. using his chi or whatever. And, yeah. and I was like, okay, maybe he's some. Maybe he works with Stick. He thinks yeah. part of Stick's faction. That's what I was thinking. Mm. And then, sure, shit, he's part of the hand, and blah yeah. blah blah. And, no, I think it's actually an interesting twist that the hand did have different factions, like, and they were actually almost competitive with competing each other. with each other like a corporation. Yeah, almost. like yeah. it's an interesting twist, and I actually didn't expect it. I thought it was kind of a. It was one of the better storyline moments for this season. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, it was just, uh, I hope to see a lot more of her in season two. I don't know, yeah. What do you think, Brian? Oh, yeah, I definitely want to see more of her in season two. Yeah. yeah, I think she was probably, like you said, one of the better characters for it. So it was actually oh, yeah. really nice. Um, Davos uh, is, uh, basically, he's sent from wherever it is, Kung Lung, I think. And he's apparently Danny's best friend. Yeah. In that city, yeah, this is where you get like a lot of the backstory for Danny, like in you know when he was training, and yeah, I think he's he shows up for what like the last four or five episodes. I think mm-hmm. is when he shows up. Yeah. Um, he feels like Danny betrayed his master, and he mm-hmm. like betrayed the city because he left. He left well, the city is, to defend it. He was also competing to be the Iron Fist at one point, precisely. Um, and he thinks he should be the Iron Fist, yeah, and then not Danny. And that come, that rears its ugly head slowly. At first, he's totally on Danny's side, and he's yeah. helping Danny reluctantly just to get him home. Well, it was, hey, we need to defend the city. You need to go home. You need to fulfill your duties. Then it became very clear that 
Danny had no intentions of doing that. Yeah. And then you have that betrayal set in, followed by the jealousy. And, you know, like, if you're not even going to bother to actually worry about your duties, then why did you even bother taking that position? Precisely. Uh, what do you think about Davos, Brian? I mean, I'm, same thing you guys thought, you know. Yeah. It was just one of those, like, it, like at first you're like, oh, look, it's a friend. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, it's not really a friend. Yeah. Like, he, it's not a lot of friends in this. Yeah, uh, yeah every, every time you yeah. think they're going to get some help, <laughs> it just gets worse. Yeah. Um, I did some little bit of digging. Um, they think some people think he's going to become the Iron Serpent. Uh, I guess is a character who has the power of the Iron Fist, but instead of using his own chi, he has to steal other people's chi in order to use the power. Oh, that's kind of cool. So he may end up becoming that character. I did a little digging. All right. Yeah, I mean, I'm not familiar enough with the Iron Fist like kind of mythology and like that kind of to it, but yeah, that, yeah, that sounds either. super so, cool. So I kind of had to dig like no that that bit. sounds That's way cool. better. Even if you just made that up, that sounds good, Brian. I yeah, think so. dude, I like somebody it. call Marvel. I got a great idea. Yeah, no, I, but yeah, I, I think that would be great, especially yeah, for no, season I, two. Yeah, I, mean, I actually think that'd be that'd be pretty badass. Actually, like yeah. I think one thing I really would have liked about this is actually you had like more variety and like kind of the the martial arts styles and like mm-hmm. kind of like make it a little not necessarily like old kung fu flicks but like have something where you like you have variety in the fight scenes yeah well and i think they're they're kind of setting this up too because by the end right at the end of the the season we see davos joining teaming up with joy to plot to kill danny yeah well which, i love how you have like madam gow at like the table right you know, next to him. taking notes yeah right? but still it, it seems like madam gow may end up being a good guy or what Maybe. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. She's really good at her. I really like her. I like that role. Like, at first, I didn't like her. Yeah, if one thing I will say for this, Iron Fist utilized Madame Gao way better than any of the other shows did. I agree. I tell you what, we can skip down to her since we're talking about her. It's a good transition. Uh, She starts out as the head of the hand until Mm. uh, Pakudo comes along, and then Mm. Pakudo actually puts her in prison. Yeah. Of course, she's staying there on purpose so she can talk to Danny. Yeah. But still... No, but, like, just some of the mind fucks she does with Danny are so phenomenally well done. Yeah, she's screwing with them the whole time. She she screws with the Daredevil, too, and everybody else she comes along with. But the way she deals with Danny is completely mind fuck central. Yeah. Some of those lines and stuff. Um, I don't know. To me, she's still a big mystery, though. I just wonder... Kind of. Yeah, actually, weirdly enough, that's, that's actually accurate. Like... As much as you actually see her being utilized in this, it really doesn't delve into backstory outside of the fact she can be, like, in an abandoned room for, like, months on end and just be fine. Right. Yeah, and then and this one we actually got to see her with some, like, a little bit of powers. Yeah, because yeah. she actually pushes Iron Fist yeah, back, back. Yes. telekinetically. Yeah, so... Or like, it, like, a chi yeah, push yeah, sort of thing. At, up to that point, we just thought she was just a regular person, you know what I mean? Like, we've never seen anything or like that. just a crime lord. Yeah. yeah. From, like, yeah. Daredevil, right? Yeah. And all of a sudden, now she's got powers. You're like, whoa, what's going on here? Yeah. Yeah. And she's also been long enough, around long enough, she says, you know, she's the one that said, I've seen, and I thought I'd never lived to see another Iron Fist. Yeah. And that, that was... And uh, she's seen the, the city, too. Yeah. Which is crazy. Now, see, the, uh, well, because it actually does suggest she might have been kicked out of the city, right? That's what I was thinking, is that she was part of the city and mm-hmm. then got kicked out. And so she knows about it. And she trained for it. And she might be, like, the Davos of the last Iron Fist. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like... She was. Like she came back. Like she, like, yeah, like she should have. She felt she should have been the Iron Fist. Mm-hmm. So she has all that training. Or maybe she gives Davos the power to become the Iron Serpent, Iron Serpent. in the beginning. I don't know. I, I just that'd be kind of a cool transition. Well, one thing I, I think like that that. this 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 show missed. I think that would have been would have put it together a little more. Would have been if there was a previous Iron Fist who trained trained the other guy you know what i mean like mm-hmm. like so like instead of dealing with a mystical dragon or whatever yeah like, like so so like, I don't know. so that he kind of like well that and like either that or like show the dragon like yes like you don't necessarily have to like have a giant like scene with the dragon but like you could show the dragon showing him going through the trials yeah or yeah through. And I, but i really i think that if they would have had that that aspect of it and like you knew that the other, the previous Iron Fist, um, he had one more, one more use of his Iron Fist left. Yeah, like a Ghost Rider kind of. And thing. and that's why it got, 
um, passed on to the new guy, mm. yeah. right? So that the new guy, you know, he he learned and he became the Iron Fist and he could use it all the time until he gets to a certain age and he has one left, you know, I mean, that kind of thing. Right. Yeah, there's and a then, limit on it. Yeah, and then at some, at some point in this season, in so order... You just have to, like, count down? In, 29,861. Yeah, yes, but like, or, or like an age. age. Yeah, like an age. But like, so at some point in this season, him and Danny are standing there, and the previous Iron Fist sacrifices himself and his one last Iron Fist to save Danny. So Danny kind of gets the the whole gist of you're right. That is what I need to be. You know, I mean, that, that what, what it means to be the Iron Fist. Yes, I, I think that would have. I think that would have kind of made it for me. I mean, we I had we had a conversation before that. You know, Aaron, you you. This is the first one that you kind of fell. Oh yeah, like this kind of kind of felt drawn out. I think there's like by episode eight or so where I just kind of lost interest and like I kind of just put it down for like a weekend or so. Yeah, and I haven't done that even with like Luke Cage or any of the other ones so far. Yeah, and, and that's I think that would have helped. I mean, I can kind of see your point with there, but for me, I would have been content just having, like, Roaring Thunder being, like, more of, like, the consciousness of, like, right. background. Yep. Like, just having that sort of, like, internal struggle be kind of shown more. Or even if he just gave ancient wisdom, just like they did in Kung Fu, the, you know, the yeah. Kung Fu show or something. Yeah. I don't know. Um, let's talk real quick. we got one more character to talk about. That's obviously Claire Temple, um, who is the one that ties all the defenders together. Mm. Uh, she's a little bit more active in this one. She's still a supporting role, but she's starting to learn how to kick some butt. Yeah, like, like you actually see her, like, kind of learning, like, martial arts and stuff like that, and kind of, you know, being pissed off that she's kind of always put off the side and that she's always like in these weird scenarios with it. There's some nice references to Luke Cage too. You got the holes in the shirt and the love letters mm. from prison or whatever. So, you know, um, but she's, uh, you know, there's not much else really going on with her. She's kind of there to help. She helps out Danny and Colleen. Yeah. I mean, time. she's like, kind of gives like background of like, Oh, I've dealt with the hand sort of stuff. And, and there's really, there's a guy, there's a guy you should do. I mean, there's two guys you, you should, should meet. meet. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you can tell that she's the thing that's put, pulling those guys together. Mm. Right. And we, we talked about this on, was it Luke Cage? Yeah. That she, her, her death is what brings those, those four together. Those four together in the comics. In the yeah. comics, whether they'll do that in the show or not, right? And, and then everybody, you know, and there was a fan outcry that you know they don't need to do that for this one. She just needs to bring them together. She doesn't need to die to do that, so that way she can stay on because they really like her character. Yeah, yeah. Who knows what happens, but yeah. I mean, I'm fine with it either I, way. Like, I like the character, I do, but like, if that's how they want to go with the plot of it, like, I don't think it's necessarily horrible. It's just. It's one of those things you have to judge based on how it's implemented. Yeah. I think it'd be better for the story if she died, but, I mean, if they can find a way to keep her in the supporting role and not make it... I don't know. They don't I, have to make too much of a hard of a left turn to make it happen. And I don't know. Like, make I kind of think, like, with as much as you've seen her in the show and, like, as much as, like, she's worked with every character, I think you probably could bring the characters together without really needing her to die off just because of how much it's already been intertwined already. Yeah, I mean, and some of the stuff we've seen on, like, the Defenders trailers, where, like, uh, we see Daredevil come into the interrogation room and say, Jessica Jones, don't say another word, yeah, I'm right. a lawyer. Yeah. So you already get those two connected without her. Yeah. True. So, you know, it's, so there, it's part of it's already there, mm -hmm. and so she's just kind of bringing those last couple pieces, so it could happen without her dying. Yeah. It could. It could. It'll be interesting to see what happens. All right, uh, so... Uh, Grade wise, Brian, what'd you think overall? Um, overall, are we going to grade it? We're just giving it a letter grade, yeah, or are we just, grading it against other other the other series? We can do both if you want. Okay, well, yeah. overall, when did, like by itself, I would give it probably a a C B rating somewhere in between. Uh, yeah, somewhere right in there. Okay. Um, overall, I I put this as the my number three. Okay. Um, Daredevil, and then Jessica Jones. And then this one, and then Luke Cage. I still, I'm still not a big fan of Luke Cage, but um, those would be mine in succession for the okay. four we've seen so far. All right. Um, I'll go next. I'll say uh, by itself, I would probably give it probably similar, maybe a between a C plus to B minus. I think that's that's probably fair. Um, I think if I had to rank them in the series, I would probably actually put this one last. I think I actually liked Luke Cage just a little bit more. I don't know if, what there was about Luke Cage that... There's a little bit more story, maybe a little bit more drama to it. I, I don't know. Um, this one was kind of all over the place, and I honestly think it had one too many 
back and forth. Like you, this you're for Danny, then you're against Danny, then you're for mm. Danny again. And, and I think it was one too many of those going on that that kind of took away for it for me. So, uh, Aaron, what do you think? Uh, in terms of grade by itself, C plus. Um, in terms of where it ranks, I would put it on the fourth as okay. well. Um, I actually think Luke Cage does better just because even though Cottonmouth does get kind of killed off early on in Luke Cage, you actually do start liking him as a character and you do like the villains and like it really builds itself up and it keeps a very coherent pace. Right. Whereas this jumps around a lot more and like you don't really see Danny evolve as a character in the way you do with Luke Cage to a certain extent. Oh well, yeah, I can see that. I, the only thing I, to, to, to go with that, I, I think... Like we've talked, this was the one that uh, Madame Gao. We see, yeah, we see her develop a lot in this. Yeah, one. it's oh, actually yeah. interesting because you see every character outside of Danny develop. Yes, the character. it was almost as if Danny was just a side character in this whole thing. Yeah, it really and is. All the side characters developed, developed a lot. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because like you look at Luke Cage and you can make an argument like all the villains aren't really fully developed. Correct. But you <laughs> also see Luke Correct. Cage developing. Whereas this is like, Danny remains static from beginning to end, but everyone else changes and evolves and grows. Yep. Yeah. Well, except maybe not Madame Gao as much. You just kind of learn more of the backstory. Yeah, Matt, you, you She's better utilized, but she is kind of consistent as well. But I like the mystery about her. Like I said, yeah. I, I want to know more about her. Right? Oh, yeah. I actually think she's a very Especially much a highlight. The whole twisting at the end. Well, I thought, you know, just w- watching this one, and then think about how we've seen her in the past, and now we understand why... Kingpin was afraid of her. And it was like, why? She's a little... Why is she? And then and you just... We're gradually getting a better picture yeah. of Madame Gowan. Well, like, a lot of that with Kingpin really like is this. actually just him being respectful as well. Yeah. But, yeah, definitely it, it does add to the character in the previous... You know, yeah, seasons. well, it, it takes her from... Like I said before, it takes her from being this crime lord, drug lord, mm. which I thought she was, and it actually makes her... A little, really deep, especially takes her heavy into the mystical side yeah. of things. So we don't know who she been, how long she been around, mm. what does she know? She's obviously been yeah. to the city. She's obviously seen another Iron Fist. So there's some serious ties. Yeah, yeah, with her. So oh, maybe yeah. she ends up being like a, I don't know, black sorcerer. You know, who knows? You know, well, know, I mean, it could be that she's been. You know, because she's like, we we never got how far apart the Iron Fist are though. Yeah, we because don't, you don't really know the know. age range. Right, yeah, so that. we don't really know like when the last one died, when this one mm. happened, or if it's like a simultaneous, this one died, so now we're having the tournament to see who the next Iron Fist is, yeah. or if it's a... Yeah, that, it really doesn't hint at it. That brings up another thought, too. This only, like, the alignment of this Seven Kingdoms only happens, what, every so many it varies. Of years? It actually because, varies. Because, I mean... It basically it happened fifteen years ago when Danny disappears. No, no, it's it's once every is it fifteen years? It's I don't think 7, it was that 15. often. It, whatever year it is, that's that's it, it it aligns periodically because they went and got drunk. Mm-hmm. So well, they no, they actually did that in the kingdom as well. Oh, they did in the kingdom. Yeah, it's just not they, in the main country. Oh no, yeah. that's what it was because this was his first chance to come back. Yeah, I'm just wondering, is it really every fifteen years? Because I thought it was a lot longer than that. Because if it is longer, what made it come back? Well, no, like, the Sooner. reason it's you need something like an Iron Fist is because of how frequently it does pop back to the mortal oh, okay. plane. Yeah. All right, okay. Um, but, yeah, it's it's a little off, and some things aren't really as explained as well as you would like. Yeah, all right. I thought maybe, you know, it was something, there was a reason, you know, like mm. a destiny why Danny left and why the city reappeared. When it yeah, reappeared. it was a lot of just personal reasons. Okay. More or less. Well, like I said, they don't... They don't like, he kind of makes arguments for, like, of him defeating the hand and, like, you know, being a different kind of Iron Fist sort of thing, but, like, right. it, a lot of it's just... So, I'm still looking for desire justification because he never really says, he never really explains it, and it's just one of those things that stuck out in my mind. Like, why? Other than you wanted to come back and to your old life? What? There's got to be a little something more than that. Mm. You've taken on this big, huge, mystical role. Well, yeah, I mean, that's why his one friend so pissed off at him is like, I know. You, you took up the role. Why did you just fucking abandon it? Why did you even bother taking it? Yeah, I guess. I, I don't know. Well, well, I guess hopefully maybe season two will flush that out. And, yeah, I uh, mean, you might have it flushed out a little more in Defenders as well, but I probably yeah. wouldn't expect it to be too heavy, if anything. I just wonder if they were just in such a hurry to make sure this was done so many months before Defenders came out or something and they rushed, rushed yeah like it's kind of like 
All right, well, we got Luke Cage done. We still have to do the last one. Now we'll put something together. Yeah, so it, it, it kind of has that feel at times. I, mm. I don't know. Maybe they're going for something that we don't see or mm. we can't see yet. I don't know. All right, well, we definitely flushed this out as far as we can. And uh, real quick, where can you find four Midwest guys? It's real easy now. You go to www.themember4midwestguys.com. Again, that's the number four, midwestguys.com. One more time, the number four, midwestguys.com. There you can find everything. You can find our iTunes. You can find our, a link to our uh, Podbean, to our Twitter feed, to our Facebook account. You can uh, also get all the podcasts there. They're listed chronologically as we post them. Or you can, they're all categorized. So if you want just the binge cast, you click binge cast. If you want uh, our Game of Thrones, we have two Game of Thrones podcasts now. You have the Night's Watch as well as the Houses of Deli. You would either click either one of those and it's categorized for you. It breaks down and plays them all for you in order. So uh, if that's what you want to do, check us out. So please, please stop by. Please leave some comments. Uh, we would love to hear you. Can, every podcast on the website, you can leave a comment. We want to know, we want to hear back from you. We want to know how we're doing and... Brian, we might even you had an idea. I think was maybe what shows you want us to do. Oh, definitely. We, if you have a show that you'd like to binge watch, or you know, you have seasons that you've watched, um, we'd love to hear what it is so we can take a look, take a peek at it and see if we're going to binge watch it. Maybe we'll do a review of it. Um, I know some of the shows that I've watched from people I've worked with told me about is like uh, The Rock's Ballers on HBO or um, Power on Showtime. Um, yeah. So if you have shows like that that you, you you love and you don't think people are watching that you think we should do a review of, uh, let us know what it is. We'll give it a, we'll give it a go. Yep. Send us an email, uh, four Midwest guys at gmail.com. There you go. Or go to the website. All right. Well, Brian, thanks for joining us. And yeah, thanks for having me, man. Aaron, thanks for joining us. Yep. And this is B. Willie saying we'll catch you next time.